Hello, my name is Ronnie Shellis. This is going to be uh, a fairly brief discussion on some ways you can begin to write out your harmonica tablature. Notes for representing uh, you know, the holes you're playing or vice versa. Holes are symbols you'll use to represent the notes you're playing. But really the idea is to be able to tab out a simple melody or riff and have a system that you use I think that it's safe to say, and it's fair to say, that the system of uh, the handwritten system that you come up with can be different from, and I'm going to kill this light so we don't have shadows. We've got a little bit of daylight left. Um, your system that you use handwritten can be certainly different from what you use when you're typing it, let's say. And the reason is you're going to be limited with certain characters not available when you type it and certain things that I'm going to show you today. So this is not rocket science. I, I'm going to admit that it's it's lack. There's a lot that I can't represent with this. Um, like, there's some things missing that'll come up that we'll talk about. But here's what you can do. Let's tab out a chord, the one two three draw chord, which is a D chord on a G harmonica. I will simply show you my system. I'm going to write one two three, and I'm going to circle it. The circle tells me to breathe in on those notes or those holes. If we want to blow, we'll put one, two, three, comma, I'll explain the comma. I'm trying to do this as neatly as I can. I don't have great handwriting, but uh, one, two, three, draw. When I have a comma and immediately represent the thing that I just wrote, this could have been a note. In this case, it's the blow chord. It's not circled. I will play these two blow chords double timed in one beat. So it'll go. So this took one whole beat, this took one whole beat, and this takes one beat. So moving on, if I wanna represent obviously a two draw, you figured out I'm gonna circle the two draw. I will not circle blow notes or chords. Let's do something where we have something swooping out of a bend area where it's not staccatoed like or individual separated on a note, but you've got one, you know, I'm swooping from a half step three up towards that draw note and then four draw. So let me show you how I do that. I'm putting a three draw. I've got to represent now a, my first bent note, and to do a bent note, I'll put one line underneath for a half step bend. But I want to continue that sound, and instead of it being a separate sound, like where there's rest between, I now want to go, I'll just take a little arrow, and I'll just do a little hook like that, and I'll put my three draw. That tells me to go up towards three draw. And really often I, I mean in cross harp, the blue note, you don't really have to bring it ever all the way up to the three unless it's part of the melody. You can hang out right there. Four blow. Four bend. Vibrato it, I'll just put like a little V. Believe it or not, that's a, even smaller than that typically, like a small V on a note that I wanna hold a vibrato. Octaves, I'm gonna go fairly quick cause this, <laughs> let's just keep moving, right? Um, three, six, blow. I don't want to breathe in, so I'll just write it like that. For me in this case, because it's a three and a six and I'm putting the comma there, I know that I mean octave. That's just been the system I've always used. You might be thinking, well, I thought you said it, the comma meant play them in one beat. It does, unless the notes written are an octave. <laughs> so in this case, like a three, six or a two, five, I, I just, that's how I've always written octaves. So I'm just sharing that that's, if that's confusing, I'm sorry. It's just my system. I'm sharing what's worked for me. 
Let's tap that. Again, I'm on a G harp. I had a four bend. And now I want to swoop out of the bend into this warble. Four, five, draw. So the way that I do that is four, uh, four, five. And I know this is going to seem weird to some of you, but I'm just going to show you how I've always done it. I know that I'm now playing four, five, and when I put this little arrow side to side, it tells me to go back and forth between those two notes. Now look, some of you may be thinking, Ronnie, you're nuts. This is confusing. This looks stupid, and that's fair enough. Maybe that's what you think, but it, it may work for some other people. For me, be, to be able to see these cues visually like this is easier for me, for my brain to process and understand than up and down arrows like a lot of the tablature out there. You see you know, constant arrow changes. That just makes me dizzy following that. So to me, visually, it's more pleasing to see something like this. Um, so that's the, the gist of how I'm doing it. You can also indicate rest in the music, like if you have a distinct rest of two beats. One, two. I would just simply put two double bend, two lines underneath, two draw, and then just two dots right here for a rest per, those are each one beat rests. And then three draw half step to two draw. So that's about it. That's what I wanted to share today. I don't think there's a whole bunch. Let me just look, make sure. No, I mean, this will get you pretty far. If you, At least you have a simple system if you're writing it. And if you're typing it, um, maybe consider if you're doing cross harp, there's a lot of draw notes. Just keep the numbers you type draw notes and put a small lowercase b after blow notes. And if you're doing a three draw, you know, full step bend, use the little quotation marks. That's a half step. If there were one, there's two of them. That's a full step. If there were a step and a half, you go all the way down. Then you've got to put three of those. Um, when you're typing, that's a better method for doing bending. Uh, and there's a lot to be said about um, perhaps if you're really into this and you're like, Ronnie, this doesn't work for me, then maybe you kind of look into how other guys are using a real um, staff to put down their tablature and indicate the time signature, etc. But for me, in a pinch, this is just an easy method. So I hope it helps somebody out there, and I'll catch you in another video real soon.